That's it. I'm recording now. So lying back on the mat. I can just lie with the, the knees bent, resting against each other, feet a little apart. Checking that the feet are parallel. Returning your awareness to the breath. And with each in-breath, allowing the tummy to rise. You can feel the back arching a little. And with each out-breath, let the tummy sink down and your back sink down against the mat. So we'll do that a few times. Inhaling, letting the tummy rise. The back will arch a little. Exhaling, tummy sinks down and the back sinking down against the mat. Just carrying on. Three more breaths. And then we're going to rest the hands just at the front of the hips there, the bony part of the hip bones. And as you inhale, let the pelvis tilt forward. And as you exhale, tilting the pelvis back and scooping the tailbone up a little off the mat. Inhaling, pelvis tilts forward, back will arch a little. Exhaling. Pelvis tilts back, scooping the tailbone a little bit off the floor. Do that a few more times. This is really to stretch out the muscles of the lower back. So we're not lifting up into a bridge or anything. Just gently curling the tailbone, scooping it up off the floor, engaging the tummy muscles. You can try that with the, the knees, not hip width apart, and just check the feet are parallel. And notice as you scoop the tailbone up, where do you notice that? So the muscles of the back. Is it the thighs, front or back of the thighs? Is it the knees? So obviously working without strain, just noticing which areas being targeted. So now we're going to exaggerate that a little bit and start to come up into a gentle bridge. So if you bring the arms alongside the body, roll the shoulder blades in, and then just lengthening the lower back, kind of tucking the tailbone under. So as you inhale, scooping the hips up a little, and exhaling, relaxing back right down. Inhaling, scooping the hips up. Exhaling, relaxing down. You do that. Three more breaths. And we're just warming up the back, so don't overstrain, just exploring.
plan is stepping the feet a little wider apart. So I'm just going to let the knees sway from side to side. And then rolling the right knee in towards the center line of the mat and the left knee resting on top. So the weight of the leg is kind of encouraging the right knee down. Make sure the knee's comfortable. Well, feel a stretch on the outer hip. Uh, so we're going to focus on that stretching the outer hip today. As you inhale, bring the knees back up and then left knee down and then the right knee resting on top. Notice, is there a difference between the two sides? This side I notice a little bit more intense than the other. And using your ujjayi, that victorious breath, especially for the more intense postures, just to help soften the muscles to hold the posture a little bit longer. Inhaling, raising the knees back up. Now we're just going to draw the knees in, give the knees a little hug. And you can make small circular movements with the knees. A few circles one way. And then a few circles the other way. And moving into a gentle spinal twist. We're going to bend the knees, lower them to the right, and then extending the left arm out and looking out over the shoulder. And if you're like me, you can use the hand to encourage the knees down. Deepening that stretch. And as you hold the posture, if you think of trying to move your back flat to the floor, so you can try and bring the shoulder to the floor and then upper back, then more towards the middle back and the waist. And as you do that, then you'll start to direct the, the twist a little lower down. And then slowly releasing the head, releasing the legs. And we'll do that on the other side. So as you exhale, lower the knees down, twisting to the right. Bring the right shoulder towards the floor. The back of the right ribs, moving them towards the floor. And if you think of the back of the waist moving in the direction towards the floor, so it's not going to touch the floor. But if you just sort of visualize that to direct the twist a little bit lower into the lower back and the hips. <clears throat> Generally, what happens when we do twists and things is that part of our back is really flexible and another part is really stiff, and the flexible bit does all the work and the stiff bit kind of does its bit being stiff. So we're, we're sort of working away down the back by focusing on this twist. And then drawing the tummy in, bringing the knees back up. And we'll just do some little stretches out for the legs. So holding onto the back of the right thigh, we'll bend and straighten a few times, get the hamstrings all done. And then getting the leg straight, keeping the back in contact with the floor, we're just going to slide the hands up. I'll do um, a B variation, you'll start with the toes pointed away, they could do a variation with the toes towards you and the heel extending away. Just exploring that pointing, and flexing, but taking your time, noticing how that changes the feel of this hold.
Now we'll do that on the other side. Bending and straightening a few times. And getting the legs straight, pointing the toes away, sliding the hands up. And as you do so, again, keep the, uh, the lower back, the hips in contact with the floor. We don't want to start rolling up. And flexing the foot, pointing the toes away, flexing the foot, pointing the toes, and flexing the foot, lovely. And down, and then we're going to grab the belt. We'll do Maltese cross, a little variation of it. So I'm gonna go sideways here. <clears throat> Just to allow a bit more space. So I place, I'll, I'll do a mirror image. So I'm placing the belt on right foot. Place it near the heel, rather than the ball of the foot, it's more stable. Left leg extends away. And working the hands up the belt. And the leg extending again you can flex the feet a little bit and then keeping the left hand on the hip this is to stop it from rolling up off the floor we're going to lower the leg out to the side and take care if you have discomfort with that don't go into um, into discomfort. Yes, so you have to go anything like that. It might be a very subtle little movement, maybe even only halfway, that's fine. And then coming back up. Keep the belt on that foot, crossing the leg across. And uh, again, we're going to just rest the hand on the hip bone there. And the legs at about a 45 degree angle. And what we're going to do is extend through the heel whilst gently pulling on the belt. And if you imagine a line of energy going from the heel all the way down the leg, all the way down into the hip. And if you imagine that energy carrying on into the ground. It doesn't stop at the hip, it's kind of going on down into the ground. And it can be quite an intense stretch. The muscles deep within the hip. One more breath. And now as you exhale, you can let the hip roll off the floor as you bring the leg across all the way down. Twisting to the right. Stretching out the hip. Again, Ujjayi, slow, deep breathing. One more breath. And then raising the leg up. And releasing the belt, we'll do that on the other side. So placing the belt on the left foot. It's on the heel. Right leg extending away. Hands on the hip. And then bring the leg out to the left. Again, just going as far as feels right today. Without the Buttock rolling off the floor there. And you want to feel a stretch on the inner thigh. But like I said, make sure there's no discomfort, like sciatic or anything like that. And raising the leg up. Keep the belt there, swap hands, and then bring the leg at a 45 degree angle. Extend through the heel while simultaneously drawing on the belt. Getting that line of energy, nice diagonal line all the way down into the ground. Good. 
inviting the muscles deep within the hip to soften. And then lowering the leg across the body. Gently twisting to the left. And then inhaling, back up to the center, and exhaling, lowering the foot down. So we'll just leave the belt to one side for the moment. Come back onto the mat. There we go. So we'll do some for the tummy muscles. So we'll start off just with the gentle bicycles, with hands behind the head, lifting the feet. Now we're starting with the bicycles. Lower back in contact with the mat, tummy engaged. If it's comfy, you can lift the head and shoulders a little off that. Little variations, bring the opposite elbow to each knee and turn. Make sure you're not pulling on the head. The hands are just there for a bit of support. Three, and two, last one, one. Lovely, resting the head down, letting the feet relax, take a breather. Again, you can just let the knees sway a little, relax in the back. So now we'll do the reclining eagle, and uh, we're going to do kind of like a, a compress and contract on there. So we're going to cross the right leg over the left, and the left arm onto the right. If you want to, you can wrap the legs around a little bit further if you start with the eagle. So we're going to bring the elbows towards the knees, keep the tummy drawn in as you extend the arms and legs away. We're crunching and extending. I'll we'll just keep the head resting down today and make sure the back's comfortable. Keep the tummy engaged. Don't let the lower back roll off the mat. And releasing. A little breather. Working. Now I'll do that on the other side. So left leg over the right, you can wrap them around, and the left arm on the right. Oh no, right arm onto the left, sorry. The opposite way from what we just did. Punching, leg step. Maybe your own pace. Do eight, so that's three, six, and seven, and eight. And releasing, hugging the knees in. And from there, coming up into a seated position. So we'll have we go at um, cow face posture. So what we're going to do is bend the knees and we'll tuck the right foot in, cross the left leg over, 
That's it. Yeah. I'm doing. I should be doing the mirror bit here. And then tucking the foot in next to the hip. As far as it'll go. If it's not comfy like that, you can have the foot flat on the floor. Or some people like to sit on a little cushion. And sitting up tall, you can rest the hands on the legs at the spine length. Relaxing the jaw, relaxing the face. And then if you have the left leg on top, we're going to raise the right arm up. Bring the hand behind the head. And then the other arm, sweeping behind the back. Interlacing the fingers, catching onto your t-shirt, or using a belt for stability there. If you want to try a little variation, you can fold forward, take your time. Inhaling, slowly coming up, releasing the arms, and then one cross the legs, do that the other way. So bend the knees again, go for the other. This is my left foot, it's going to be on the, the bottom, right leg crossing over, tucking the foot in, that's an option for you. And we want to get both buttocks even on the mat and the spine vertical. If you find you're a little bit wonky like that, ease up a bit or let's have the foot flat to allow the spine to be comfortable. And then sweeping with the left arm, just the right leg on top. Sweeping it up, hand behind the neck or in between the shoulder blades. Other arm sweeps behind. Interlacing the fingers. Just relaxing the neck there, so not pushing on the head. And if you want to move into the forward bend, you can. And inhaling up. And releasing the arms. And I'm crossing the legs. We'll come through into table. We'll do a nice gentle cat cow. Just letting the tummy dip down, roll the shoulders back, and then tuck tailbone under, arching the back, looking towards the top. Do that a few times, and as you as you do this cat cow movement, you can really take your time and notice which parts of the back are moving comfortably or even excessively, which parts are feeling a little bit more rigid and stiff. And take an extra breath or so into those tighter areas and see if you can invite a little bit more movement into them. Might take quite a bit of concentration. No, it does for me. Like I said, some areas will quite happily take on all the work. Whilst the tight areas will just have a rest and carry on being tight. And back to centre. So I'm going to come this way just to make sure there's a bit of a little bit of space here. So what we're going to do is extend the right leg out behind, and then pass it over to the left side, and then we're just twisting to the left, really stretching out that right side of the body.
And you can notice what the bag's doing. Um, I noticed myself when I started, it was kind of more into that sort of cow position with the back dipped down. So if you feel like that, then start to arch the back a little. Do the opposite, see how that affects the stretch. And then release it. We'll do that on the other side, extending the left leg back, crossing it over the right side, and then twisting to the right. And then back, bring the knees down. So then from here, we're going to just come on to the forearms. Now I'll do a little one for strength inside the waist. Again, if you have any aches or pains, take it gently or have a rest if it's not comfy. So we're going to come into half plank. So stepping the feet back, hips will be up high to begin with. And then we're going to come forward. So a little bit straighter. And then we're just going to bring the hips to the right, to the centre, to the left, to the centre. We'll do that a few times. Good one for strength in the toe muscles. Let's do one more, each side. The centre, bring the knees down, sitting back, stretching the arms out, hair posture. And coming up into dark head down. Walking the dog. You can roll over the toes. And then we were kind of doing a little variation the other week, bringing the leg forward. So we're going to lift the right leg up. Really extending up through the inner thigh. And then we're going to come into high plank and bring the right knee towards the right elbow. And back. And then the right knee, cross to the left elbow. And back. Right knee to right elbow. I'll head by the table then. And back. And then to the left. And back. And one last time, knee to the right elbow. Knee to the left elbow. And back. And resting the foot down. Walking the dog. And just bring the forearms on to the mat. We'll do a bit of a dolphin posture. We'll just hold the bag of the wrists to us. And press it back up. Dog head down. And then we'll do that with the left leg. So sweeping the left leg up. And then high plank, left knee to left elbow. And back. And then across to the right elbow. And back. Left elbow. Back. Right elbow. Back. Last time. Set. And back. And resting the feet down. We're going to come into puppy to bring the knees down. Stretching the arms out. Resting the head. Really stretching out onto the shoulders.
keeping the hands as they are, but drawing the hips back, deepening that stretch. And then slowly coming up. And come to standing. So bring the feet into a parallel position once again. And just do some little hip circles. And the lower tummy gently engage, support and back. circles away, then we're going to change direction. And sometimes we do the circles right here, the hip making little noises there. It's kind of a cue, a clue as to what's going on. And then coming into tall mountains, so reaching up, coming up onto the balls of the feet, let the shoulders relax. And exhaling. Lower the heels, lower the arms. So we're going to cross the right leg over the left. Bring the right arm down, left arm behind the back, catching onto the elbow there. Standing tall, twisting to the right. And uh, back to the centre, rest in the arms. Keep that sorry, keep the legs as they are. And we're just going to slide the left hand down. And again, it's another way just to stretch out that right side of the body. Slowly coming up, press down with the feet to help come up. I'll do that on the other side, crossing the legs over. Left arm down, right arm behind the back, standing tall, twisting to the right. Again, just noticing what the hips are doing. We don't want to uh, sort of stick the bum out, keeping the tailbone moving down. And back to the center, keeping the legs crossed. We're just going to lean. To the right. And slowly coming up. Crossing the legs. And coming into the forward bend now. So checking the feet are parallel as you exhale, folding forward, sliding the hands down. If it's an option for you, catching on to the big toes with the thumbs, second. First and second fingers. Let the spine lengthen, let's head in six and deeper. And then letting the chest expand, lifting as you inhale, and sliding the hands onto the feet now. Bend the knees if you need to. Sinking into the forward bend, hips lifting up. Check the feet are parallel. If you turn them in slightly. And 
Releasing the hands and slowly rolling up. And letting the shoulders relax back and down. So stepping the feet a little wider, we'll do the flank posture. Right foot out, left foot in. And you want the feet pointing at those Egyptian paintings. I'll move this way, leave it to room. That's better. Pressure into the furniture. So we're bringing the hands behind the back, catching wrists, elbows, or hands like a prayer. Tummy engaged, exhaling, folding forward. Inhale and the torso lift as you exhale, sinking deeper. And inhaling as you come up, turn the feet in around to the side, left foot out, right foot in. Spine lengthening, holding forward. And inhale, slowly coming up, turn the feet in, and stepping back, catch the breath. So we'll do a little um, balancing one with the, uh, the toes. So we're going to face the short edge of the mat here, the answer. Feet a bit closer together, raising the arms up, and coming up onto the balls of the feet. Again, so he's sort of lifting a little. And we're going to bend the knees. Go in the balance. Bring the hands together like a prayer. Bring the hands down. And then you can just slowly keep the the toes curled under. So spread them out a wee bit here, make sure they're kind of even. And then lower the knees down, really stretch out the soles of the feet. That's comfy, come up into high kneeling position. And up. I'll have me go at, um, at Hero, stretching on the front of the thigh. So we're going to um, bring the feet a little bit wider, check the toes pointing straight back, and then sitting, sitting either between the heels or a little cushion, if you want, or a bolster or something under the hips there, under the buttocks. And remember, if um, once you come into this variation of the Hero with the the feet out to the side. Don't try and straighten the leg from here. Always come back into the kneeling position and then straighten the legs. So we've got a little bit of a twist on the knee. If you don't want to exaggerate. So checking the toes are pointing straight back. Bringing the hands behind. Now we're going to lift, tuck the tailbone under and sink down. It's comfy for you. You can start to move a little bit deeper into it. Just working with that lifting, tucking, sinking movement. So you've gone as far as feels right. Hold you there. If you wish to raise the arms up overhead, you can do that. 
So you might find you're arching quite a lot, so you can start to let the back sink down again if that's, that's happening. Make sure your knees are comfortable. It can help sometimes to have the knees slightly apart. And then bring the arms down. Use the elbows to come up. Listen the hands. Bring the hands forward. Coming back into that kneeling position. That's it. And then just gonna step the feet back and come down. We'll do a few little back bends. Let's shuffle this way. It's not part of it, the <laughs> shuffling movement. There we go. So a gentle sphinx posture to begin. So the forearms in the parallel position, the feet pointing straight back. And again, we want to kind of um, lengthen the tailbone away. That makes sense. So I know myself with kind of collapse in the tummy. This, you see, if I do that, the bumps will sticks up a little bit. And then if I do a back bend, it's going to um, just uh, be focusing on the lower back, the lumbar area. Whereas if you kind of extend the tailbone away, the tummy engages and it supports the lower back, uh, kind of. Encouraging the back bend throughout the spine. Noticing the shoulders. We want them moving back and down. And always making little adjustments, little. Um, Little awarenesses of what the body's doing. I remember teaching this one time and we were holding it for a good while. One of the guys was saying, is that it? We're just holding it here, is this what we're doing? I was like, yeah. I'm taking time to explore. So you can think of the, the breastbone kind of moving forward and up. Like you're telescoping the, the ribs away from the hips. Obviously, if there's any discomfort, ease up or come out of it. But you can adjust even like the position of the hands. If the hands are slightly further forward, the tummy can relax down. And as you do that, you can direct the back bends a little higher up the back. So the lower back's not doing the work. It's kind of that area between the shoulder blades, the back of the ribs, which is where I need to work. One more breath. And then we're just going to let the elbows move out, rest the head on the hands. And then we'll do a, a cobra. So either having the hands, let's so say if you want to the back, you can have them further forward. If you want lower back, you can have them closer in towards the shoulders. I'm going to work on the upper back a wee bit today. Having hands further forward for me. Tuck the chin in, tailbone lengthens away, and then slowly peeling the body up. Oh, my. Five breaths. One more breath. And exhaling, drawing the chest forward as you come back down, resting the head on the hand. So we're going to come into 
pigeon. Lovely little stretch here from the hips. So coming up onto table posture. And with the right knee, I'm going to bring that forward and the foot in front of the left leg. A little bit of an angle. Extend the leg back. Remember, you can curl the toes under to keep the knee aligned. Hope you feel more confident with it, just so sliding back into it. Now, if you want a deeper stretch for this right hip, you're going to widen the angle. Give yourself some space here to maneuver. You can have the leg, so it's almost parallel with the short edge of the mat. That feels like an option for you today. That's quite intense. We're encouraging that left hip down. And that might be a little bit intense, so we're going to ease that slightly. And then walking the hands forward, keeping that left hip moving down, extending through the left arm. So it's almost like you're beginning to twist the torso to the right. And again, using that Ujjayi breath. The whole the posture here. It can be quite intense. And uh, walking the hands back, sucking the foot in. If you want to have a little back bend here, yeah, we're just uh, bringing that left hip down, foot's tucked in a wee bit more, lengthening up along the back, leaning back in. We're really stretching out the hip flexor. And then coming up, we'll do that on the other side. Left knee forward, sliding the right leg back. Again, check the foot's nicely aligned, knees not twisted. Uh, again, if you want to have the left foot is a little bit of an angle, oh, the leg is a bit of an angle for a deeper stretch. And we're encouraging the right hip down. And then walking the hands forward, keeping the right hip moving down. Just twisting to the left, but not. And then walking the hands back. Tuck the foot in a little bit more. Encouraging the right hip down. And then lifting up along the back. Moving into a little bit of back bend. Take that forward slightly. Going to the to side. Let's just swing the leg around.
bending the legs out, we're going to come into a seated position. And moving into a gentle forward bend. So we're just going to bend the knees, bring the feet flat to the floor, sit up tall, sliding the hands down. Allowing the muscles to the back to gently stretch out. And then extending the legs out as you come up. Shuffling the hips back slightly. So we're going to step the feet slightly apart. I'll just have the feet turned in a little bit. I will do a forward bend from here. Nice deep breath as you exhale, sliding the hands down. Bold is that forward bend with the feet slightly turned in. Just for change. That's nice. I can feel it sort of opening up the muscles, so maybe a bit tight around the sacrum. And of course, make sure it's it's comfortable. And then inhaling as we come up. And see, time marching on a little bit. Um, so, uh, I know I mentioned doing about shoulder stands and things, I think, the other week. Uh, we'll give us a miss this week as, uh, as time is marching on. So, we'll do the two leg raise posture um, and then we'll focus that more on uh, the following weeks. So if you want to do the restorative one, it's one of my favourites, use the cushion onto the sacrum, uh, or you can do the traditional one just with the legs extended, probably against the wall if you want to do that. I'm going to do the one of the cushion, just to relax a wee bit at the end of the session. So again, the cushion, not too thick, just under the, the sacrum, the sacral plate. It's not really on the lower back, just around the, the pelvis hips. And then raising the legs up, you're gonna have, if you have the cushion there for support, you're gonna have the knees a little soft, feet slightly apart. Okay, so we're sort of working on this internal rotation. This evening, you can have the toes turned in slightly. You can even play with it a little bit from parallel turned in. And, and notice if you have that cushion there, how that feels in around the sacrum and around the hips. And with the feet parallel turned in. And when the feet are turned in, it creates a little bit of space in around the sacrum. Which can help relieve sciatic pain. And then resting the feet down, leaving or uh, releasing the, the cushion, relaxing the hips. And preparing for the relaxation, just for the last five minutes or so. Make sure you're
So taking a moment to make yourself comfortable, allowing your body to settle. Eyelids gently close. With each exhalation, inviting your body to sink deeper and deeper. Then making your sankalpa, your resolution. And then relaxing throughout your body. Allowing your feet and toes to relax. Your ankles. Let your legs grow heavy. Your hips. all along your back. Shoulders and arms. Relaxing the hands, the thumbs and fingers. Relaxing the muscles of your neck. Scalp. Muscles of the face. Throat, chest, and tummy. Let your whole body relax.
once again, make your sankalpa, your heart's intent. And then becoming aware of your body resting on the floor. As you invite a little movement back to your body, back to the fingers, back to the toes, stretching. And then in your own time, you can roll to one side and slowly return to a seated position. Well, it's no right. Thank you very much.